Hello, it's Jay. I am here for a chirpy and hairy waffle for uh, this April 25th Monday, where uh, I got a lot done, but I didn't get any. I, the major project went completely flat, which was installing an air conditioner. Where, unfortunately, at the end of the day, after I'd put in, I'd put in all of the, I'd put in the stand and done all of that. Turned out. The window was wide enough, but the window was not tall enough, which uh, really sucks. So, you know, you get to that, you're exhausted, but ah, you're, you're done thing. But then you get to that, you're exhausted and, oh, I'm going to have to return this goddamn thing tomorrow. Because that was, there's no other windows in our house that it's going to fit. Um, that sucks. But uh, on the good side for us in uh, Victoria here, we've still got probably a couple of months before air condition air, having our air conditioned uh, uh, contingencies worked out we've, we've got some t we've got some wiggle room so I'll get to install a different air conditioner at some point uh, yeah that 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 sucks that sucks uh, what else has happened to me since since my last waffle I finished, I finished my March of the Mammoth in April, a um, good couple of weeks ago now, A Place of Greater Safety by, uh, by Hilary Mantel, her, her novel about the French Revolution and following the revolutionaries, uh, Danton, Robespierre, uh, Camille, um, all these fellows and various people around them, including their partners and stuff like that. Yes, Theo, yes. And it was an interesting book to read in, con in contrast to her more mature work uh, of uh, the Cromwell series, which is also a historical novel and is following people that things go wrong. <laughs> things go wrong. They might think that they're right, but while things go wrong and they have some rationalizations of how, 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 they go from being revolutionaries and freedom and fraternity and equality to the great terror and uh, that consuming, consuming them. But um, it's interesting because like, yeah, I got to the end of the book and learned, oh, this is in some ways a trunk novel. It's like one of her first efforts, which she probably went back and worked on because it wasn't published until 1992. But it, it, has hints of what will develop later of great deep dives into like the psyche and the and the viewpoint and the world of Cromwell and while it's you know it's a it's a it's still a freaking brilliant novel and kind of the the epitome of kind of a slow slow burn a slow descent from from kind of idealistic revolutionaries to the idealism and the and and the rationality and the becoming rationalization of really horrible shit. And, you know, while we're in this horrible situation, so we have to do this horrible thing, it's just unavoidable. And um, it being quite terrible that way. Um, a lot of the times earlier, early in the book, I was kind of frustrated by sort of how dry it was. It becomes more involved and you, I, get, I got more involved with the characters, but it took took a long it took a lot longer time than it did with um with the Cromwell series even though you know I have to say with uh, the Cromwell series the very the first the first book took me two reads to actually to accept um Mantel's particular slant on things and I mean I think that's coming in this book too of of you get that sense of you know what they're revolting against the French aristocracy and how they're treating the majority, you know, the very, this little tiny, tiny little pinnacle up here is set up really well and everyone else below is just in, it's not even, it's not even a pyramid, it's more of like, it's, a, it's, it's up here and then it's like swoop down here and then majority of the people are in, are in abject misery and starvation and suffering. Not that I don't know if things got exceedingly better for uh, French people. But yeah, yeah. So not a super, super successful March of the Mammoth, but I'm I'm glad I I'm glad I I read it, even if I think it might just help me uh appreciate uh 
Mantell's Cromwell series that much, that much more. Um, also in giving me a big crash course in uh, the French Revolution. Though I did find myself doing a lot of studying around it just to kind of uh, give, give myself placement for where we're going because, um, yeah, yeah, it was so many different people, so many different events that uh, I was doing a lot of Wikipedia research at the same time, which is not a bad thing, but I felt like I maybe was doing that more than I was doing for Cromwell. Though, for the Cromwell series, I read an entire biography of, 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 uh, of Thomas Cromwell, so I, I did it there as well. So, uh, if anything, you know, historical fiction should make you more interested in the actual history uh, and give you a kind of a glimpse in, which it did. <sighs> yes, um, other than that, oh man, I, I've had this, I had this terrible block on doing reviews. Not that I've actually released any of them yet. But uh, I've been trying to get better at doing reviews. And I had this whole thing of like, oh, I need to prep my reviews to, to try, especially that hump at the beginning where you're trying to dump all this information at the beginning to, to inform the reader, what you're, uh, inform the viewer of what you're going to talk about. And I always find that horribly clunky. And I was trying different techniques and they were, it was making things worse. And I was just being, I was having horrible block. I had a horrible anxiety attack um, after doing, trying, trying it for this one review. And then I just went, okay, screw it. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do the review now. I'm, I'm not going to try all this, this stuff on, yes, Theo, I'm, I'm not going to do all this stuff that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to uh, layer, layer on top of it. Um, and yeah, and so I set that aside and I just did the review. Strangely enough, probably all the obsessing I'd done before put the facts squarely in my head, so I was actually able to do a review, which made me was like, okay, okay, I learned something out of it of just try and drill the base, the very basic facts, but don't try and come up with some kind of a little witty speech at the beginning because that's just not not my style, and it, you know, have an outline refer to an outline but little bullet points and then just talk and that's that's probably going to be the way to do things i'm trying to improve but it's interesting in the process of improving you get more self-conscious and you you bugger up more <sighs> yeah yeah uh other than that i i think i think i think that's probably good i was really been interested in uh michael k vaughn uh, talking about trash or garbage fiction, and uh, Steve Donahue's uh, response to that—that that was that was a really cool talk. Uh, talk, couple of talks. I should link those down below, uh, if I well, if I remember. If not, you've probably already watched them and enjoyed them. I think I come from it from a, like I enjoy pulp. There's stuff that I like that I think is is trashy, but it's I always find I always like the stuff that I read, even if it's trashy or pulpy I always find that like there's nuggets in there uh, and the stuff that I can't find nuggets in I just don't read so you know utter, utterly disposable fiction can be kind of is kind of empty whereas something like I you know uh, Michael K Vaughn I think mentioned uh, something that he wouldn't consider trash uh, the the Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, Barsoom his Martian Martian novels with John Carter of Mars and they are kind of just, they were written as sort of disposable adventure science fiction fiction, but they have such a compendium to my idea of so many different uh, thoughts and ideas of the time in a trashy form, in a, in a kind of pulpy, pulpily written uh, thing that it's like, there's just so many nuggets in there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I also, it's funny, I was looking at the, I was looking at YouTube for stuff like that, and I came up with um, uh, a fellow in Bogota who is a tra was a trash man who fished, uh, I think it's a copy of Anna Karenina out of the trash, and was like, wow, this is like, you know, an amazing book found in the trash, and maybe I can find other books, and he found more and more books, and he ended up with a library. And he ended up saying, like, you know, the people in his community didn't have access to books. 
and started lending them out to him. And um, that's sort of developed into him um, creating a library for his community and for further, for children, for um, people who are trying to kind of get, kind of convert back to civilian life after being um, kind of rebel soldiers and stuff like that. Um, and it's like, that is, those are books, you know, whether it's Anna Karen or anything else that were literally thrown away that are so valuable, that are, that are treasures and paths to a better life for people. Um, you know, just from a very, you know, just technical viewpoint, but also something like Anna Karenina of just kind of, uh, enriching, enriching your life, both, both ways of that, of, of things. And so you know, literal trash, trash, trash books being a, a complete treasure uh, to people. Uh, and I thought that was an interesting contrast to, you know, what gets, how we dismiss books, certain books as trash, you know, which isn't to say I don't think there's bad books, but, you know, Steve, Steve Donny is, you know, okay, there's objectives objective stuff out there of there's good books and there's bad books but uh it, it's interesting how how one society one culture can just casually throw stuff away where in another culture that is a treasure that is something that could change your life that could put you on a uh, on a on a better path give you the tools which uh, i thought was quite quite an interesting contrast all right. And that is me waffling. All right. I've been Jay. More videos later.